Hello everybody, it is Toby here, back for another episode of Minecraft The Lord of the Rings. And I admit, it has been a while. It has, it has, it has. That is completely and utterly my fault. It has been far too long. Uh, and that is because, look, look at the... Look at the frame rate, look at the render distance. I mean, look at that frame rate. I have got myself a new PC and it is running absolutely beautifully. And yeah, it took a while because when I get had my old PC and it was like 12 FPS or whatever it was, it made recording a little unbearable and not really that enjoyable anymore. So I just started not doing it anymore and essentially what that meant was is it left series in the dust for like two months and then I got a new computer and now I'm back motivated again to make videos because they actually look presentable so what well, what has happened since last episode last episode we set off from over here ish in a boat because we went down to here and then started going across and then I realized oh why don't we just boat around and I just went boating and I ended up here and the reason that never got uploaded is because it was literally an hour of me boating so I did say I wouldn't cut anything out but that is one thing that I just wasn't going to upload we're not using fraps anymore to record anyway we're using OBS uh, so that shows a difference in recording and yeah today we are going to continue retreading our old paths and hopefully make it back to the Shire so what we need to do is get back to the road and just go along so the road would be south from here and yeah it's it's good playing Lord of the Rings again it is really good having this amazing graphics good like ah oh, it's just beautiful having like a beautiful game which isn't stupidly laggy and is working there are there are a couple lag spikes here and there which I can't help but tried I've literally tried whatever to stop it but it just won't seem to fix itself so that's one thing. Audio may be a little weird because I've changed my setup and my mic is in a slightly different place. So I'm going to do my best to make it sound as close to what it used to as it did before. But apart from that, yeah, we're just going to uh, wander on back to the path now. And I mean, I probably raided all of these houses when we went this way last time. But there's no harm in like running through and checking. So yeah, this sort of, sort of same style as last time, just an hour also of me running and yeah yeah look I've been in here before so yeah and got the old good old skin back on my full uh, I think I'm gonna do my full armor and we are wanting to go east so this way this is the way we want to go yeah wait mm. yeah we're on this road so we actually want to go south a little bit until we get to a crossroads there's the road we want to go on almost start going in the wrong direction Oh yeah, it's been a while and lots of things to talk about, lots of things that I want to chat about. I got the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition relatively recently, like all three films Extended Edition and I've watched them through now, which is brilliant. I mean, having the Extended Edition is really, really well worth it, I think, anyway. I think I don't see why they wouldn't release them like that to start with, but anyway... Yeah, that's the thing that happened. Um, what else? Well, Christmas, obviously. New PC and all that. It's doing well. Um, and yeah, just relatively a lot of things have happened. School's getting really, really like tough at the moment. It's getting difficult, which is to be expected. I'm in sixth form now. I'm doing my AS levels this year, so uh, the workload's getting a thing. So that's why videos started to slow down before even being cut off completely so yeah you can expect like slower videos but hopefully more of them than there were in the last two months but yeah school's really really piling on which I mean is to be expected and I can't do anything about it you guys will just have to bear with me I'm on 205 subscribers again been stagnant in the last two months obviously for obvious reasons so thank you to all who watch this video and have stuck around uh, through this big like hiatus I guess you could call it of me not recording but I mean you know it's like I couldn't really help it it's just a thing I died basically that's what everyone on SMPDX is saying anyway that I just went completely inactive for a little bit 
and just completely died. Didn't upload anything. Didn't I haven't been, I haven't even played Minecraft honestly. I haven't not just been recording. I've just not been playing Minecraft because it just got to a point on my old PC of being completely unbearable to play. Like it would just completely jitter about, lag, frame rate would drop, and it was getting worse. If that's even possible, it was genuinely getting worse. So I had to just stop playing it. But uh, then, then I sort of got into another game, which wouldn't jitter about and break like Minecraft. I started getting into RuneScape, and me and a load of friends play RuneScape together. I mean, if you want me to do RuneScape videos, I don't really know what I could do them on apart from farming, farming, farming. But if you want me to play RuneScape on the channel, please just leave a comment down below and say, yeah, RuneScape will be cool. Might do RuneScape live streams. I mean, I can live stream pretty well now. Doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to live stream this series, though. This series is still going to be my recording for like an hour straight chill series. That's why I'm doing this episode now. I'm not ready to do an SMPDX episode just yet because, you know, that's takes a lot of work and I am on Christmas holiday right now so I'll probably have an SMPDX episode out by the end of the Christmas holidays if my workload that I've got to do and still haven't done uh, it gets done but yeah an SMPDX episode would be quite fun to do I've just lost my train of thought with that really badly and I don't really know where to go on it I just don't know what to do what projects to do I mean I can find I'll find something to do but it's just one of those things where I lost all complete idea of what I was doing. I think that's something about Amplified as well. With it being so flat. Or like not so, Oh my god. Amplified, but no. With it being so hilly, it just... Yeah, every, everything's bunched together really, really well. There's massive hills in between things. So in order to get builds close to each other, you have to dig through tunnels or build massive terraformed slopes and stuff which I mean and it's all right but it's definitely a different playstyle. I'm not sure if I prefer it to normal vanilla terrain I'm pretty sure vanilla terrain will always stay with me I mean large biomes is pretty cool I like playing on that sometimes if I'm building cities and that and we're actually back in the Dunedain place at the moment I'm pretty sure yep we're back on tower hills so yeah we're doing we're doing quite well for our running hopefully in the next few episodes after this we'll be encountering some exciting things i wonder if horses are still completely laggy do i have a saddle with me i do so maybe we can horse i wonder if they will be still completely laggy on my new thing oh my god stop just accept me <laughs> No, no, accept me. No, this horse, I swear. There we are. They still kick me off. Saddle. This horse is really slow. And they're still completely lucky. Oh well. <laughs> There you go. Oh well. You know what? It's just a horse. Let's put some of this stuff in here. Hello, Dunadine. Tower Hill's looking great. Don't have any quests for me, do you? Nah. No quests, as usual. I like doing quests. They're good fun, but... Oh, God, it's been a while since I've played Lord of the Rings as well. I'm going to have to get my talking back on. I haven't spoken this long in a while, so... Wow, it's... It's just realised how long it's actually been. I think that this must be my like longest hiatus on my channel. Which is sad. I mean, I did upload a video a couple of days ago with Nano. I did Golf With Your Friends. That was good fun. It was different. And, yeah, it's not family friendly, really. I mean, I guess it can be. If you don't mind cussing and swearing and that, go for it. But if you do, don't watch it. Because it's a game where... Me and Nano get very angry if we can do bad, if we do stupid shots and stuff, because it's a golf game and you've probably heard of it or something. It's good fun if you want to watch something a bit different to this, but if you just want me to stroll through in a nice, relaxing manner, just talking, talking about whatever comes to mind, then 
It's fine, because I've been told that my voice is quite relaxing to listen to sometimes, if I'm not going on about complete and utter rubbish. But if I know what I'm talking about, it can be quite a good thing to listen to. It's a bit like a podcast almost, but not. It's like a podcast whilst gaming, which is fun. Because, yeah, I could just go for like an hour and it'll be all good. And Can I just say, with this new PC, I can really appreciate like the just the landscapes of this Lord of the Rings mod and how beautiful it actually is. Come on, there's a big group of people over here. Surely... One of them's got a quest for me. Surely one of the elves or a Dunedain has a quest. No. Not a single quest. Really? I guess not. Oh yeah, um, I was thinking about starting up uh, another series. A building series where I build... Something I don't know like where I build like a city or something like that. Just keep building and building I think that could be fun and now that I've got like a good computer It would be beautiful to like build time lapses and stuff into it Which I can do now with this amazing computer and OBS makes it so much easier than fraps to do time lapses I could choose which one monitor I'm recording and watch it on my other screen without even having to have the window open Whereas Fraps, I had to have both Minecrafts on each screen. And it was just, oh, it was a nightmare. And I don't know why I stuck with Fraps for so long. I guess it was just easy to hit a record button and go. And OBS, I mean, it's harder to set up and stuff. But ultimately, the payoff, I think, is great. Because you can stream with it as well, so. It's great. And I'm not recording my audio through OBS. I'm recording it through Audacity. Because when I record my audio, first off, it's really quiet and strange. And I mean, I guess if I just turn it up a little bit, it would be fine. But I like to edit my audio so it sounds a bit better. I compress it, normalize it, bass boost, treble boost, and limit it to a certain amount of decibels. And it just makes it sound a lot nicer. There's no background noise. And it's really well, and that complements my blue snowball that I've got very nicely. So, I think it's a good thing to do if you have the resources to be able to record, like, three, do three things at once on your computer, which I'm sure everyone is. Because I could do it on my old computer, so why can't you do it now? Because my old computer really wasn't that spectacular. I mean, if you look at this now, I'm getting 200 FPS on Minecraft The Lord of the Rings, where I, I used to get, like, 10. Which, I mean, it's such, such a difference, and it's beautiful. And, you know what, we're not going to... We're not going to sleep. We haven't had much action recently. We're going to see if any orcs challenge us when we get out of Tower Hills, which is not for a while. Because orcs spawn... I don't think orcs spawn in Tower Hills. Surely not, no. But we'll just keep running as we are going. There's another big group of people, and hopefully one of them does have a quest. Although I doubt it. No, it doesn't look like we've got any quests there, which is stupid. Give me a quest. What do you need? Ah, uh, well... So what? We're just going to keep running. And thumbnails for these ones are going to be quite similar. Because it's just all about retreading the old paths. I mean, as soon as we get to, like, Waymy and, like, here, all of this side is new. And we may venture into the old forest, just cut in through the Barrow Downs and up, rather than go follow the road. Or we'll go down and through, because that's quite fun. That is quite a fun thing to do. And it means we get to experience loads of different stuff. And I mean, wow, just... This mod pack is spectacular. I say this every single time, but it really, really is. And I mean, some other series I could do. I could do a modded series, which is like a proper like mod pack, which has machines and stuff in it. And I mean, if you want me to do that, that would be brilliant. But I sometimes lose my way a bit with those because I don't know how to do things. But if you want me to do a modded series, comment down below saying, yeah, do, do a mod pack. And if you have any mod pack suggestions, suggest away. And we'll see what I end up doing if I ever do one. But I think a building series is definitely something that's going to come along. And I mean, it will be a great basis for tutorials as well. And it means I'll be able to have new ideas for tutorials as I build in this town and see how things go. And I could, I like what I can do is I can talk over building a house or I can time lapse me building loads of houses over and over and over or city wall or whatever I end up doing. It can be spoken over. 
And I already have a city that I've been building over on Tolly's server, which I usually use as my creator server. But again, I lost my way with that. I got a bit lazy with the building and Fluff pointed it out very vigorously that I was building in a very, very lazy style, which I completely admit I was doing. I was literally building like it was the kingdom of Mormor. Like I did not care what that place looked like. And it was very lazy. It looked like a really, really bad representation of, like, medieval London, which was just an awful representation of it, and it probably looked absolutely nothing like it. But that's not what I was going for. I was just going... I was just building, and it was completely made of wood. There was no variation in the houses apart from a couple different height variations. There was barely any different buildings, no cathedral, no churches. And it was just awful, to say the least, and I'm not happy with it at all, and it probably will never get shown on this channel if I ever finish it, which I'm not going to. But the next building series I'll do, I'll definitely make much more of an effort with what I'm building on there. Like, definitely make more of a plan, more of an effort, which will be good. I'll be glad when that happens. And I mean, I may even do it on a super flat world, and I build up the terrain myself rather than working off... Minecraft terrain, which, you know, isn't the best, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Because, yeah, I, I've got not enough time to do everything I want, so I can try. I can try, but, yeah, I don't really know how I would go about doing something like that. I mean, I can do time lapses now, which is brilliant. I'm so happy I can do time lapses easily, and I'm going to be doing them on SMPDX a hell of a lot more. And definitely on my building stuff as well. Time lapsing building is amazing in my opinion. But it's just one of those things where building is something I like to do when I'm in a call with like Fluff and Nano or whatever. Or I'm just sat listening to music or watching QI on Netflix, which is something I do far too much. There's only four series of QI on Netflix and I started watching them like a couple of days ago. I'm already halfway through the second one. <laughs> so, you know, QI is definitely a great program. Especially when Stephen Fry was doing it, because Stephen Fry has got an amazing voice. And yeah, he did the Harry Potter audiobooks, and I listened to all of them, and it was just brilliant. So, you know, it's just one of those things that I ramble on about and watch a lot. But yeah, I've been watching Netflix a lot recently, because my old computer could handle that. And now I've got my new computer, it's even better. I can do so much more multitasking. I've upgraded my monitors instead of HDMI to DisplayPort. Which looks incredible, be incredibly better, incredible that, mm, incredibly better, and oh, it's just amazing. It's genuinely such an amazing thing to see. Is just all of these different vibrant colors that were sort of taken away with HDMI, in my opinion. So yeah, it's a lot brighter. It's a lot nicer. I'm happy with it, and I'm still using the same keyboard, mouse, mic, monitors. As I did with my old computer, I just upgraded the computer, which made everything feel so much better. And I'm genuinely so happy that I decided to upgrade it, rather than buy anything I didn't really need but looked cool. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I've rearranged all of my Lego as one thing as well. That's, def that's all been rearranged. So I may do like a bit of a setup tour with this new PC and all my Lego rearranged and stuff. And just show what I'm really working in. I mean, it's brilliant. I've got loads and loads of cool stuff just sat around that... I mean, it's kind of cool. I, I want to get more cool stuff. Like, I've got a lizard next to me. Not a real lizard. Like, a big metal lizard that is used to be a... Looks like a CD rack. But what I've done is I've just hung loads of, like, keychains and a pocket watch and some Lego off it. And I plan to just cover it in little memento-y things like that. And I mean, it, I think it looks brilliant how it is at the moment. And yeah, it's just, I've got loads of stuff just everywhere. Random things that I've seen and like, yeah, that's kind of cool. I want it. And it's just one of those things that I like. I like collecting things. I really do. I like collecting different things. I mean, most notoriously Lego. I love collecting Lego and I've got upwards of 175 sets by now. And, I mean, it's not that much in the grand scheme of LEGO collection, but for a 16-year-old who's been having a couple LEGO sets every birthday and Christmas for however long I can remember, it's definitely, definitely a lot 
considering, yeah. I mean, even with this Christmas, when I had this computer, I still got two small Lego sets. I got uh, the two buildable figures of a Special Forces TIE Fighter pilot and a Praetorian Guard. Which are two really cool things, and one of the, and obviously, Praetorian Guard, new Star Wars. Oh, that film was, I thought it was brilliant. If you don't want it spoiled, just skip past this bit in the video, just keep going until you don't want Star Wars anymore. But, yeah, Star Wars The Last Jedi, I thought it was brilliant. I know a lot of people hated it, and certain parts in it, but as a film... I went in there, I went in there not, I like, with every Star Wars film, I go in not expecting anything, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and I hate it if uh, I go into a film expecting huge things, and I don't get what I expected, and I think that's the problem with a lot of people this time. They went in expecting answers to all of these different theories that they've been working on for two years now, and when little to no of the, none of them were answered, really... No, literally not many theories were answered at all a load of people came out disappointed and then started slandering the film and gave it a bad rating on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like that and I mean if you just do what I do and go in expecting like go in expecting episode 2 really the rain of course it wouldn't be Lord of the Rings without rain would it anyway if you go in expecting something like episode 2 and you come out with what was episode 8, and you're just like, well, that was genuinely brilliant. I mean, episode 2 was, in my opinion, the weakest of all the Star Wars films so far. And I still enjoyed it. I still like the film. I still enjoy it as a Star Wars film. I enjoy every Star Wars film they've released. Well, every one that I've seen. I haven't seen the Holiday Special, so you can't slander me for that down in the comments, but... As for all of the other films, like, in the trilogy, The Last Jedi, for me, I preferred it to Force Awakens. And I know that's definitely a controversial thing to say. But I did I did prefer... Oh, the quest! Anyway, I did prefer it to The Force Awakens. Mountain string. I've got a stack of string. There you are. We did a quest, finally. Brilliant. Well, there we go. Quest done. I don't want to interview you too, my friend. Anyway, back on Star Wars. I preferred it to The Force Awakens because it did a lot more risks. It didn't stick to the traditional, there's a thing, we need to blow it up, how do we blow it up kind of mentality of a lot of Star Wars films, the Starkiller base and stuff. I mean, there was the thing, Snoke's big ship that they need to get rid of, but it wasn't, it wasn't like something, it was like what Empire did, with Empire being the Rebels lost quite badly, like, a lot of things happened that you wouldn't expect to happen, like, there was parallels to Empire, but there was also a lot of parallels to Return of the Jedi with the whole Snoke sequence. Like, that Snoke sequence, I loved it. I absolutely loved when Rey and Kylo went up to Snoke and Kylo did the whole, like, trickery with the lightsabers. And I mean, it's just another big bad guy killed by his own arrogance. And I love the fact that Snoke didn't get his backstory. I love the fact that Snoke didn't stay on to the last film because it really helps build Kylo Ren's character. And then you really realise after he's done it, he didn't do it because he was turning like Vader did. He did it for his own power. He, oh god, there's an orc. He did it so that he can, like, become the biggest bad guy. And after he tried to sway Rey, and she said no, he was, like, the big bad guy of the trilogy. Which is, he is the main villain of the trilogy, just much like... Vader sort of became in the original trilogy and you know like that's the thing is when people get angry about that they get angry that Snoke's dead we wanted Snoke stories well there will no doubt be comics and like canon books explaining Snoke like there is with so many other things and just because it wasn't in the film doesn't make it bad and I mean with all the anthology films that are happening there may even be a Snoke anthology film happen you never know. That's the thing with these things. 
they have now left possibility for anything to happen, which would have been rushed in the film, in my opinion. And I think a lot of fans are angry with the fact that their specific theories are, like, completely thrown by the wayside because of what this film is. And the Star Wars trilogy, they were never focused on the theories. Like, if it had just been Rey was Skywalker's daughter, great. So what? Like, it's been about the Skywalker's... So what? We've already had the big father reveal. We've already had, like, anything that could have happened. And, I mean, so what? <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, we've got the Skywalker lineage in Kylo Ren anyway. So fans are saying it's always been about being about the Skywalkers. Where's the Skywalker? Well, look, Kylo... I can now fast travel, apparently. Great. <laughs> well then. Okay, great. Good to know. I don't use fast travel, so... So what? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, back to Kylo. Yeah, we got Kylo. He is the, the Solo, and everyone's getting mad that Luke gave himself up to the Force. I mean, that's that was brilliant. That's what Yoda did. That's what Ben did. They realised that they had the potential they needed... And so they didn't, weren't needed anymore. And obviously, he's going to be back as a Force Ghost, isn't he? That's just a given. But still, people didn't really like that. They thought, well, he didn't do much. Well, he did. He did. He didn't need to do much. This, these films are about the new generation rather than the old original trilogy generation of characters. Which, I mean, you know, we don't need another trilogy about Han, Leia, and Luke. In their, like in their prime, as we say, we got that with the original trilogy, and we'll get more of that with the solo film of Han Solo in his prime, and there probably be other films as Disney continues to make more money out of Star Wars. But even still, it's like the whole point of this film was let the past die, kill it if you have to. That was the quote from Kylo Ren that was repeated so many times in the film, and I feel like that's not what the fans are doing at all. I feel like Ryan Johnson did a really really good thing including that line is sort of like a stab at the fans like the hardcore diehard fans who are original trilogy fans rather than star wars fans like that's the thing it's a fine line i'd say i'm a star wars fan because i am a fan of all the star wars films not just the original trilogy whereas some people naming no names only like the original trilogy and regard the other films as not great, as in the prequels ruined Star Wars by George Lucas doing it. And I mean, it was he, he was allowed to do whatever he wanted with Star Wars. If he wanted to make it into a high school musical ripoff with Star Wars characters, go for it. It's his franchise. He could have done what he wanted. It's not for the fans to decide. And it got so bad that he sold it to Disney because he thought, well, I can't do a good enough job for the fans. Maybe Disney can. And now, apparently, all the films are too disney and again, it's Disney's property. They can do what they want with it. They don't have any sort of... Like, the fans don't have any right to complain that Star Wars was made for them. Because it wasn't. Like, no one complained at the original trilogy. Whereas if the original trilogy was released today, and there would have been, there had been another trilogy... Pre like, if the prequels had been released first, and then the original trilogy, I guarantee people would... Though, like the original trilogy fanboys would have turned into prequel fanboys and said, "Oh no, it's too different. It's not not enough CGI or something like that," and it would just be the same arguments but for different things. And that's why it's really stupid. So, to all the original trilogy fans who aren't Star Wars fans, they're just original trilogy fans. Stop making, stop being so vocal about your un reasoned hate of every single Star Wars film that Disney releases because I know you all hated Rogue One I know you all hated The Force Awakens for being too similar but now you're contradicting yourself saying you're hating the new Last Jedi for being too different just go in there as a fan of Star Wars in general let them take it creatively where they want to take it and accept that's how it is and enjoy it for what it is like a lot of us do and that's the thing I really love the film, and I know a lot of my friends really love the film. There were iffy parts in it, 
but there are in every Star Wars film. Like, that's the thing, it's like, and so many people complain, 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 and all, like, that's the thing, it's gonna put people off wanting to take risks with Star Wars. Ryan Johnson did a huge risk, and I thought it paid off completely, but everyone who just, like, over half of the Star Wars fans are just completely slandering it, and now what that means is Episode Nine. it's not going to take any new risks, it's just going to be too similar, and everyone's going to complain about it being too similar. And I mean, that's the thing, it needs to take risks in order to be different. And if the fans won't let that happen, we're just going to keep getting rehashes and rehashes of the original trilogy over and over and over. And everyone's just going to sort of go off it and there will be no more Star Wars for anyone. And that's the thing, and wow, that is a glorious sunrise. Whereas if, like, I just go into Star Wars films not expecting anything and coming out thoroughly thrilled and happy that there is a new addition to the Star Wars franchise that makes sense, that is good, and that I like. I think... Star Wars has probably the best and worst fan base because they have such a die-hard, hardcore fan base who will literally do anything, spend any amount of money on the franchise, but they're also very vocal about stuff they don't like, and if it is not exactly to their theory or exactly to what they think should happen, it's not right, it's not Star Wars, it's not canon, it's disney and that's, that's just stupid, in my opinion. I mean, Star Wars fans have every right to hate the holiday special. But again, Lucas was in exact his right. He, like, in his, was his right to be able to do that. As it is Disney's right to be able to do whatever they are doing with the new Star Wars. And I mean, I still love them. I will still go and see them on opening night. Come out enjoying them. Until Star Wars is no more. Because it's Star Wars. I enjoy Star Wars. As long as there is enough feeling of it being like Star Wars. Enough like enough character references, enough to make it say, Alright, this is this is a Star Wars film. Enough things to tie it into the universe. I don't care what the story is, I don't care what they do, it's Star Wars. And I mean this was a good Star Wars film. Luke's character I thought was great. I absolutely loved it. Leia flying, again, great. It was shot a little strangely, but it didn't make any it did not make no sense. It made sense. People are saying, well, oh, Leia's never shown force powers before. She would never be able to use it like that. Well, if you think about it, yes, she's shown force powers before. She's been able to sense Luke through the force in multiple situations, in like Empire Strikes Back and that. And then it wouldn't take very, like, it would take barely any effort to pull yourself through space with the force all you need to do in space this is this is like general basic physics all you need to do to make something move in space is give it a tiny tiny little bit of force in a direction and it will continue to move in that direction until it hits something because there is no air resistance in space it is a vacuum so for Leia to fly back to the ship she would have literally needed the tiniest little pull of the force and she would be there. She would be absolutely fine. Which, I don't see why everyone is complaining so much about Leia flying. And how it's too much of a force ability for her to be able to do. It's like, it's not basic physics shows that even if like a little tiny bit of rubble had hit her in the back, she would have floated back to the ship. Just because she used the force to do it doesn't mean anything really. She can use the force. She has it. She has the force. And anyone... Like, anyone can be in touch with the Force, as is stated in this film. Just some people are more easily in touch with it in this film. More people... There are, people are more awake to it to, uh, than other people. So that's the thing. It's like, it makes no sense for people to complain about it. And for all of you complaining about the casino scene, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was a new angle of the Star Wars galaxy we have not seen. All of the weapons and arms dealers who basically pull the strings uh, of the um, wars and such. It just reminded me of the prequels with the Trade Federation and how that was really what caused the Empire, <laughs> is the Trade Federation. And it's 
it was a very real thing, like a very real world thing to see in Star Wars, and I thought it was brilliantly done. I thought it was absolutely great. And, you know, people complain about it, so they're not going to do anything like it again. And it just means, like, oh, it just gets me angry how vocal some people can be about completely un, like, unregistered hate that is not really needing to be there. If you don't like the film, fine, just say you don't like the film. But if you are a so-called Star Wars fan and don't like the film, that's fine. There are certain films in Star Wars franchise Star Wars fans dislike more than others. I dislike Attack of the Clones more than any of them. But I still like it because it's Star Wars and it still plays a part in the bigger picture of Star Wars. And that's the same as like I know a lot of people didn't like Rogue One. It explains one of the things people complained about for years. People complained about oh it's a bit stupid that they had a thermal exhaust port that big in one location. I mean Yeah, but think about how big the Death Star is, like realistically how big it is and two meters on it is not a lot at all. Think about how big everything is. Oh, we're back in the Shire. Brilliant. And yeah, that's the thing is like, think about how big the Death Star is and how big a two meter opening is and how their reactions to it are like, yeah, that's really difficult. And it was a plot hole, I say that in very, very big inverted commas, which didn't need explaining at all. It was perfectly fine. I don't see why everyone was complaining about it before Rogue One. It was a, it was a, it was a plot hole that didn't. It was one of the few plot holes that didn't need explaining, because it made sense to why they, it needed one. Yes, the Death Star needed a thermal exhaust port. And, I mean, admittedly, they could have made it smaller with vintage or whatever over it. But even still, like, they had no idea that they would be able to be thwarted by a little exhaust port. And and to explain it in the way they did, that a Empire, like, a rebel sympathizer who worked for the Empire put it there as, like, a thing to stop uh, the Empire, like, the only chance they could have to bring it down. To have that there was brilliant. I think Galen Erso and the Jin Erso storyline in Rogue One was brilliant. And I thought it, it was very Star Wars. It made sense to be Star Wars. It just shows how widely the rebel flag reigns over the galaxy rather than the Imperial flag. Because yes, the Imperial flag is by far, by far, by far in charge. But still, it doesn't stop people like Galen Erso doing what is right for the galaxy. And I think that was absolutely brilliant in Rogue One. And I think in The Last Jedi, it was brilliant to have the Rebel Ring get given to that little boy who is a new generation of Rebel fighters. And just because he's Force-sensitive doesn't mean that it was cheesy. Because it makes sense. Ray's a nobody, this guy's a nobody. It makes, it makes sense and it just shows how people wanting to do good isn't just confined to this one band of resistance fighters who can all fit on the Millennium Falcon by the end of the film. It shows that however they're going to beat the First Order in Episode 9, it is possible. They have allies and they have people wanting to do good. And I bet that when J.J. Abrams takes the helm again... It's going to be a thing about how people are going to these remote planets and, like, coordinating people who want to do good and want to fight back and taking them to resistance bases. And by the time they need to fight the First Order, they'll have more than enough to do it and they'll be able to take it down. And, I mean, you don't need to answer all the theories that people want answered. You don't need all of this hate to different directors and stuff. Because Ryan Johnson's got his new trilogy coming up that doesn't have anything to do with the original trilogy or anything more than the fact, oh, it's a Star Wars film. And I think I'm still going to love it. I'm still going to enjoy it. And I think that the fans are still going to hate it. No matter what. They always do. There will never be a film to the Star Wars fans that is as good as Empire Strikes Back in the Star Wars franchise. And I mean, Empire Strikes Back is still my favourite, but it doesn't mean Last Jedi didn't do well in competing with it. 
Just because Empire Strikes Back still wins doesn't mean Empire Strikes Back was a bad... No, no, Last Jedi was a bad film. And it really irks me that so many people completely hate on it, completely. And I mean, they did just enough, like... And everyone complained about the humour. There was humour in the original trilogy. There was humour in The Force Awakens. Everyone got mad at Poe's character going, holding for Hux or whatever he did. That makes sense, because in... The Force Awakens, he goes, who talks first? You talk first, I talk first to Kylo. It's his character. He is cool, collected, and a little bit cocky under pressure like that. And he can do really do that in any situation. It makes sense. It makes complete sense. And oh, it just really irks me how people slandered the comedy in this so heavily when I thought it was good. I thought it was... It was, it was very Star Wars. Star Wars has always been a light-hearted film franchise aimed towards kids in respect, but also enjoyed by adults. And if you can take that on board, that it is light-hearted in a light-hearted film series, then I don't see why all of these people who hate the franchise are still calling it absolute rubbish and giving it, like, really, really bad audience um, ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not needed. And it just, oh, it makes absolutely no sense. If you're a Star Wars fan, you should like Star Wars, not hate on it. You're not a Star Wars fan. You just, you little. Too right. Anyway, if you're a Star Wars fan, you shouldn't be hating on the franchise as much as you do. Just enjoy it for being Star Wars. Buy your merch. Buy your toys. Give Disney as much money as you want for them to keep making Star Wars films. Because you know that you still want Star Wars films. And if they stop doing Star Wars films saying, Nope, the fans, they were too harsh. We're not going to be doing Star Wars films anymore. There would be outrage. And it's always it's going to be your fault if they do it anyway. So stop hating on the film. Just watch it for what it is and enjoy it. We're back in the Shire. It is peaceful here. Rant over. Oh, Star Wars rants. Rant over. Well done. Where are we? We're just about to go in. There we are. Well, there we are. All right. My mouse messed up a little. We're just about to enter the White Downs. We're going to be going back just along the road. And I think when we get to Brandywine Bridge, we're going to go down through Buckleberry. And probably enter the Old Forest. And follow that river along and hopefully not get killed by trees which is probably what's going to happen because we did a smart thing this time in the last series we went to the old forest before we went to blue mountains and all of that thing i'm pretty sure so we were not prepared in the slightest where this time we've got armor we got these like brilliant brilliant like hefty blue dwarven warhammer a strong linden bow and a handy dwarven mattock and our lasting hobbit pipe of course and we've got all of these cool armors and stuff that is brilliantly equipped for fighting trees. And I mean, since we've got a mattock as well, it's an axe, so it does extra damage to trees. So the old forest should be no problem whatsoever. But I've been talking for a hell of a long time about Star Wars. And I'm sorry if all of you switched off, but that was a little bit random. If you like Star Wars, go for it. Comment down below. Let's have a, let's have a debate. And, I mean, if you really like Star Wars, go check out my other video where I unbox the Lego Millennium Falcon, the Ultimate Collector Series one, and I built it. This set, this set, that set is incredible, and I absolutely love it, and it was everything a Lego set for Star Wars wants to be. It was the ideal Lego set for Star Wars Lego fans, and I am very happy that I have it. I'm very happy that I have it built. So, yeah, well, it's great. I'm happy, and my hand is getting cramped for holding down Sprint so long. Oh we well, I'll be ending the episode shortly, but not too shortly, because I have a couple things I want to say. If you have any ideas for any series you would like to see that I haven't already, like, spoken about, like, or no, well, I have, just any series that another YouTuber does, or a completely new idea, if you want me to give it a go, comment down below. If there's reference material like other YouTubers doing it, then send it, like, tell me their channel name, tell me what it's called, and I'll go and check it out. And if it's something I see, can see myself doing, I'll give it a go. I mean, 
me and Nano, we play a lot together. And I'm sure when Na if Nano comes back and he wants to do like a modded series or a different series, because we're already doing our Golf with Friends series at the moment where we just play through all the maps. Me and Nano have discussed doing a modded series for a while now. And I mean, if you just have any ideas for series that you would like to see, building series, if, I want, if you want me to build certain things from Lord of the Rings, give my attempt or whatever it is, just comment down below and I will see if it is something that I would like to do because I love recording these videos, I love making videos, I just run out of ideas so quickly and since the platform is so saturated and I feel like no one would watch a new idea. So if you've got an idea that you want me to do and I do it and you don't watch it, then and if you don't comment down below saying you watched it on that episode of whatever I did, then I'm going to be very disappointed. And if you if you exclusively watch Lord of the Rings, I'm not going to force you to go watch anything else. But I would highly recommend you go and watch some of my other series. Because, I mean, my tutorials, they're great. I did a Hobbit Hole tutorial as well. I need to check out how that's doing. I need to just look at my channel. I need to just look back on my channel and see how everything's doing. Because I haven't looked at my channel in so long absolutely ages so i need to i need to sort that out i need to understand where my channel is at i think my most view video is still my mumbo cube unboxing and i think that's sat on like 3000 views now and i'm like where did they come from what what happened and my old lord of the rings series some of the episodes are upwards of 300 views and i was like well that's crazy it's absolutely ridiculous like why why? And it's probably because they people liked the old format a lot more than this format. But I'm going to keep doing this format. And if you want a Lord of the Rings series in the old format, you'll have to wait until this one's over. Because the old format took a lot longer to record than these formats. And it meant that the episodes, I didn't get as much done, for one. On camera, that is. You didn't get as much content for Lord of the Rings. And you didn't get a much of me talking about it. I mean, you didn't get to see the environment and the mod as much as you would like. Because, you know, I really like this mod. And I think it is brilliant. And I think that you should really take this mod in for what it is. And just love it. Love it to pieces. Because I love it. And, wow, this has been a long recording session. But, I mean, where are we in the white... Uh, we'll, we'll keep going a little longer. I guess because the white the white downs aren't the most interesting thing in the Shire, are they? They really aren't. There's big white hills. I mean, they're, they're kind of cool. It's different. I like it. I really hope my audio and my recording turned out great because I was having some trouble with it earlier. So I really hope it turns out all right. And I'm really really looking forward to uploading this video to YouTube. And I think that is where the episode is going to come to a close. It's a little long, a little shorter than an hour. But I can't. I can't do anymore. My throat is getting raw. We've done a lot today. We have travelled seriously far. We have done all the way from there to here in one episode. And we will be getting definitely into the Old Forest next episode, I think. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you made it all the way through, leave a like and a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to me for more Lord of the Rings and plenty of other series on the channel. Thank you for bearing with me for two months of not uploading Minecraft and stuff. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.